Within this section, we're going to talk about differentiating community-associated C. difficile with healthcare-associated infection. And we bring up again the study by Lessa et al. that we discussed in the epidemiology section. The Lessa et al. study was a study that looked at a cohort of patients in the United States and estimated that in 2011 alone, 453,000 individuals got C. difficile in the United States. Of that 453,000, approximately two-thirds had healthcare-associated infection and one-third had community-associated infection. Community-associated infection being defined by an individual having the onset of symptoms within the community or within 72 hours of admission to the hospital with no hospital admission within 12 weeks prior to the onset of symptoms. Of that group that had community-associated infection, 18% had no contact with medical care. They didn't go to a doctor's office. They didn't go to a hospital. It's unclear why so many of those individuals got C. difficile. Of the group that had healthcare-associated infection, only 25% had an onset in the hospital, implying that the majority of those patients actually had the onset after they were discharged from the hospital. A very important concept, though, is that healthcare-associated infection has more severe outcomes than community-associated infection. Recurrence rates in the community were approximately 13.5% versus 20.9% with healthcare-associated disease. Short-term mortality in the community was 1.3% versus 9.3% with healthcare-associated infection. So it does matter whether you have healthcare-associated infection versus community-associated infection. And in the United States, healthcare-associated infections with C. difficile are the most common of all healthcare-associated infections. This is work that was put forward by McGill et al. in November of 2018 in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it's a follow-up study to a study that was published several years prior. Within the earlier study, they looked at a cross-section of individuals in the United States who got healthcare-associated infection. And of those individuals, approximately 21.8% got a healthcare-associated pneumonia. 21.8% got a surgical site infection. 17.1% got a gastrointestinal infection. 12.9% got a urinary tract infection. And 9.9% got a primary bloodstream infection. When they updated this data, looking at a cross-section of patients in 2015, there was actually an overall decrease in all healthcare-associated infections from 4.0% in 2011 to 3.2% .2 in 2015. But the bulk of that decrease was seen with decreases in surgical site infections and urinary tract infections, as the slide speaks to. The proportion of infections that were pneumonias that were healthcare-associated infections actually increased from 21.8% to 25.8%. In addition, the proportion of gastrointestinal infections increased from 17.1% to 21.3%. And once again, C. difficile was the most common healthcare-associated infection, accounting for approximately 15.5% of all healthcare-associated infections. The bottom line is that healthcare-associated infection is associated with worse outcomes, and C. difficile is the most common healthcare-associated infection. As a country and as a healthcare system, we need to consider ways of reducing healthcare-associated C. difficile further, therefore reducing the risks associated with this infection and the complications as well.